Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about this crossover that happened between the Carnage book by Torin Grombeck and also the Venom book by Al Ewing, although I think Al only writes one issue of this crossover. And we'll get into that because that's part of some of my criticisms of this crossover. But I'm also going to talk about Carnage number seven because that kind of acts as an epilogue to this and a setup for you know the next story that they're gonna tell with Carnage and probably lead into Venom War. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about Venom number 31 and 32, and then we're gonna talk about Carnage number five, six, and seven. So buckle up, I got a lot of opinions about this one. As I said in my last Carnage video, I understand what Torrin's doing and what the team is doing on the Carnage book, that they have a lot on their plate too. They gotta to bring this God character and ground him again, but still keep him powerful so he can be around for the Venom War storyline and what they're doing right now where he goes into the Venom book and goes into the garden, which we're gonna talk about today too, because this book picks up after those events that we you know, left the hang uh, cliffhanger on in the last episode of Venom number 30. So there's a lot I can tell they're trying to juggle, but I don't feel like in doing all that juggling, they're really telling an interesting story in my opinion. And I'm starting to really lose interest now. In the first book, I was kind of like 50-50, like, I don't know if I'm feeling this or not. Like, you know, I can't quite put my finger on what I'm not liking, you know, because I see the effort there. I see the, you know, the um, the writing effort. I see the editing effort, the art effort. Uh, but I now in this one, I feel like, okay, this is just kind of a mess. And pacing, I think, is the thing that is really hurting this. And this crossover is a prime example of it because this is supposed to be a four issue crossover of, you know, symbiosis necrosis, as they call it, where it's Carnage versus Dylan Brock Venom. You know, he's the new Venom. And it really isn't that at all. It's pretty much just the first issue is that battle. And then the second issue is a recap of the first issue just told through Carnage's POV, which I have a lot of opinions about that. And then we get into an Al Ewing issue that picks up after Venom number 30. So we're in the garden with Carnage, you know, now that he's over there. But he left Cletus on Earth. And so we have issue four of this crossover that deals with Cletus trying to recoup after the battle, even though he won the battle and the Carnage symbiote kind of found where Eddie is and disappeared. So I don't know. I, I Again, I can follow the story. I'm just not liking the story. And if you feel differently, though, let me know down in the comments below. Um, the first issue is has great artwork by Ken Lashley. So I really loved visually the first issue. Nothing against Perry Perez. Uh, I think Perry does a great job also. But Ken's style on this, like with Venom, like he looks very ferocious. And I really like how he draws Dylan Brock Venom um, in this one. And he got, you know, got the chains on there and stuff too. But Dylan has like a job now or he's trying to get a job and he's pretending he's 21, which I'm like, why doesn't the symbiote kind of you know, add a wrinkle or two to him, you know, make him look a little older. Uh, but the symbiote's just not into it. So maybe that's why, because the symbiote's like, dude, I'm bored. Why are we doing this? And and Dylan's like, yeah, dude, we need bills. We need to pay for the rent at dad's place. So like groceries and stuff, we can kind of, you know, he was saying, we got to pay for groceries. I'm like, I feel like you can kind of steal that stuff. You know, I mean, you're a comic book character with no money and stuff. Like, I, you know, I guess that doesn't send a good message, but still, I feel like, uh, I feel like you guys can get by with the food thing a little bit easier than the rent thing. I understand that. Uh, without having like rob places so it's like okay for rent wise he wants to get a job and you know keep the apartment going so that way when his dad comes back there's a place for him and also so he has a bed to sleep in with a roof and a, a door that locks you know so i totally get his ambition here and his motivation but uh but then he's like meets these guys he starts working with them they somehow buy that he's 21 even though he probably doesn't have all the right credentials or anything and he's way less than 21 and the manager's like well he's lifting boxes that are heavy you know heavier than he should if he was 14 or 15 so maybe he just looks young and fine I'll give the kid a break and we'll pay him a, you know a few bucks an hour just to get him started and that's what Dylan's doing but then all of his co-workers get killed by carnage and that sends Dylan on a hunt for carnage leading him to the church where the symbiote first separated from Spider-Man and bonded with Eddie Brock and in there, there's a bunch of people that have been killed. And Carnage has this police officer that he went and grabbed off the streets randomly. And he put him up in the bell tower of the church. And this he's doing it as a callback because obviously one of the first victims of Venom was Venom suffocated a police officer uh, in that church, I believe, or near the church. And so that's what you know Carnage is trying to recreate. He wants to see if Dylan is more of a hero than his father was when he first became Venom. So he puts this cop up in the bell tower and he's like, all right, but if he does go up there and save the cop, it's going to activate the bell and that's going to hurt Venom and separate him from Dylan. And then I can grab the symbiote and learn where Eddie is. And that's pretty much what Carnage's plan is overall. 
And so that's what he does. And he executes it pretty flawlessly. I mean, there's a little bit of a struggle there, but at the end of the issue, he gets the information he wants and he finds out where Eddie is. And then the second issue is probably where my criticism is really strong because I felt like in the first issue, they did a good job of showing a little bit of fear. You know, I was like, okay, this is off to a pretty good start. You know, Dylan doesn't know what's going on. People are missing. The cop gets taken and you don't see like every step of how the cop gets taken. Then Carnage goes to Dylan's house uh, because he takes like a backpack and puts dynamite in it and brings it to Dylan's work to try to blow him up after he kills everybody. Uh, and then, you know, and then so Dylan goes back to his apartment and sees that Carnage was there. And then that leads him to the church. And what this issue does, issue two, uh, Carnage issue five, I guess, kind of walks you through every step that Carnage did. It shows him meeting the landlord at the building to get into the building, you know, to go to Dylan's apartment. It shows him approaching the cop. It shows him remembering the cop that got suffocated by Venom at the church. So they show that flashback. And it, it just basically spoon feeds you everything that was kind of interesting about the first issue because the first issue didn't throw it in your face. It just kind of was like, oh my God, look at Carnage. He's one step ahead. He's doing this. He's setting all this up. You don't really need to see how he killed everybody in the warehouse where Dylan works. You don't really need to see that. But the second issue here explains that in full detail of how he did it, how he shot the last guy, how he baited, you know, Dylan and everything. And I'm like, this is five dollars, you know, or four or five dollars to pay for this carnage issue. Why am I paying that much money for something that I really don't need and just repeats the first issue? Like, that's my biggest criticism here. And some of you may disagree, and, and that's fine if you do. I'm sure the creative team on this, will, if they watch this video, will disagree with me. But if you could hear me out for a second, like, I think of everything when it comes to comics. Like, you know, if you're writing a story, it ha you want people to pick this up. You want them to enjoy and get something new in each issue. And it's not that there's nothing really new in this. You are getting new things. You're seeing stuff through the eyes of Carnage. So when he rips the symbiote off of Dylan and, you know, goes in and finds out where Eddie is, you see a little bit more of that. But to me, I'm like, why couldn't you take a couple of these elements, a couple of the elements in the first issue, split them up to where it's a little bit more linear? And I'm not trying to make it, you know, b boring in a way, because I know linear can be boring. It is to me sometimes. But and then add some different things, make the battles a little bit longer or, or you know, throw an extra victim in or something, a, you know, I don't know, just something like the pacing on this. I'm like, I read that first issue and I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this. Let's see where this goes. And I read the second issue and man, were the brakes pumped so hard on the second issue, even though it ends with Carnage, you know, figuring out where Eddie is and going to the garden and showing up at the end of, you know, or the middle of issue 30 of Venom. So it kind of ties back into that. Sure. But now I'm like, all right, we're two issues into this crossover. I've heard the same story repeated already once. What is issue three and four going to entail? And issue three is pretty much Dylan. You know, he's now has the hand, you know, the, the God hand of Venom and Eddie. Um, you know, that is now talking to Dylan and Dylan is being healed by the symbiote. So he pretty much spends most of the issue three getting healed or in some of issue four, I think, because they bounce around the timeline a little bit, but he's getting healed by the symbiote and you're like okay and then meanwhile Cletus has been left by his symbiote because the carnage entity you know symbiote went off into the garden and it left the human part of Cletus that he created and so he's back on earth and he's kind of whimpering and trying to figure out what he's going to do without the carnage symbiote until the symbiote comes back up or comes back to him so issues three and four that's pretty much what it is like you know part three you're in the garden it's written by Al Ewing you got some great artwork in that one too. And that one's showing at least a continuation of that battle. So I'm like, okay, you're getting some more of that. But, you know, and I guess that kind of ties in to necrosis symbiosis because it, it deals with the symbiote of Carnage leaving right from that battle with Dylan into this. But I guess I thought this would, or maybe it was marketed this way, or maybe I understood it marketed this way, that this would be a crossover specifically of Dylan and his first major battle with Carnage as Venom. And that kind of got me excited because it felt very like 90s in a way. <laughs> and I was like, OK, this is cool. This could be a fun thing. And I feel like it's, you know, Carnage made short work of him, which, OK, I guess that makes sense, too. He's like an all powerful God character now. But then it just kind of lingers. It repeats the, you know, the first chapter just told from Carnage's point of view. And then it gets into like the garden for part three. And then part four is just Cletus whimpering around, waiting for his suit to come back and dealing uh, being fully healed and goes into like the, the void and stuff. And Dylan is, um, you know, after he gets healed, comes out, his heart is stitched back together and everything because he was stabbed through the heart by Carnage. 
um, he gets healed and then the suit leaves him. And so now it's just Dylan at the end uh, and he's like in the void talking to the hand uh, and, and then he's kind of stuck there for a while. And we're going to get more into that when we talk about the Lee Price, you know, the blood hunt issues and also the free comic book day, like tie in Dylan story. So we'll get into that in an upcoming episode. But for now, um, that's all this story was. It was just that kind of setup. And then at the end of the Carnage issue six, at the end of this crossover, it has Flash reemerge because now Carnage and Cletus have rebonded and they're like, all right, let's go deal with Flash because we kind of left him in his own, you know, jail cell in his like mind in the void, I guess. And so they go in to get him and he breaks free and they teleport out into issue seven where they land at a concert, I think by an artist named Frost Malone. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So anyway, so they're at a rock concert and obviously the anti-venom symbiote doesn't hurt Carnage anymore. Music doesn't hurt. Fire doesn't hurt him. So he's super o overpowered, and while they're fighting at this concert, Liz Allen makes a breakthrough. She grabs some secret weapon. She goes to look for Flash, and then she finds out on the news that Carnage is attacking some, you know, or symbiotes are attacking, uh, a, like, a nightclub where a, a concert is. So she uses her symbiote, Misery, finally, to track it down, and they go, you know, and she brings this weapon to the battle and tries to kill Carnage with it, but then ends up talking, <laughs> which I'm like, why... Just shoot the freaking gun. Uh, you know, this is Carnage you're dealing with. Um, and she doesn't. She gets stabbed. But obviously she's going to be fine because she has a symbiote, which Flash now has learned, which I thought that was a kind of a cool reveal. I'm like, all right, you know, you didn't want to share that information before. You want to reveal it in a cool way. And this is good because you, there's a moment where he sees Liz get stabbed and he freaks out. And OK, they, he finds out now she has a symbiote. And I'm like, all right, that's actually a pretty good reveal. I like that part. But then Flash picks up the gun and he shoots Carnage. And that's where the issue ends. And I was kind of like, well, okay, so we know Carnage isn't going to die. Uh, you know, they're already announcing a bunch of books that Carnage is in. Issue 8 comes out next month, obviously, but he's going to have his own Venom War miniseries, and he's going to play his own part in the Venom War. So I don't know what this weapon does, if it depowers him a little bit, and then he has to go around, you know, looking for power. Because in this crossover, he goes up to the garden, and there's a full-on battle. He's killing Eddie symbiotes like, from different timelines and stuff left and right. He's using the Necro Spear and killing them. And he even kills Eddie Eddie at one point, but then Eddie, you know, stitches himself back together because he's a human symbiote. So then he does that and Carnage is left with no choice but to blow up the garden, essentially. And then he destroys the garden and explodes. And then I'm guessing everyone, all the symbiotes that are left alive, only a couple of them, including human symbiote Eddie, they probably bounce to somewhere and Carnage slipped through the void to come back to Earth, obviously. So we'll find out, I'm guessing, in upcoming issues where Eddie went and where some of the other symbiotes that lived went. Uh, if Meridius is still alive, like I'm thinking he is too, because uh, I saw the other two symbiotes trying to pull him back together and, you know, pull him out of the wreckage of the battle with Carnage. So we're going to see more of that. But uh, yeah, Carnage made such short work of Meridius in this that I'm like, well, is, is Carnage the bigger threat now? Or, you know, I don't know. I guess we'll see what Venom War brings. But for now, at least for this Carnage run, I... I think I've made up my mind and I would say I, I don't really like it I don't hate it it's certainly far from the worst symbiote thing or anything I, I that I've you know read or anything um and again it's just my opinion you know if you disagree let me know but I just felt like repeating the first issue and showing all of Carnage's steps to those murders and how he set everything up I'm like man that's so unnecessary in a horror movie you don't want to see every single thing that Jason does to do something, he just he just goes in and kills people. You know, I, I don't think you need all of that. And I guess Carnage is more of like a, a Freddy Krueger, so he does kind of play with his food a little bit. But even still, I don't think you need every single step and to fill a whole second issue and then charge people full price for that. But this could have been like a backup story or a little supplementary story in like a Carnage uh, Black, White, and Blood book or an annual or, you know, something, a digital book. Like some of these just didn't feel like they needed to be in there, these pages. And that's I hate saying that because I said that about Carnage Island. I was saying how much of a waste of paper it was and people would <laughs> love to bring that up and say how mean I was. But I, I, you know, fine, I'm mean. But this is how I feel when I'm reading these things and paying money for them is like I'm like, well, I don't feel like I should have paid money for issue two. It didn't add really anything that I felt the story needed. And that sucks because that's a whole four or five dollars that's just wasted and paper that is kind of wasted on something that didn't really need to be spelled out for us, in my opinion. Um, this could have been a three-part crossover, and you could have had the issue seven be the ending with Flash, or you could have put more Dylan in here before you took him off the map. I don't know. Like, you could have had the battle be a little bit longer. Um, 
uh, just my opinion. I don't know. Like, I, it's, it was, you know, they break up these stories really well, usually where you get a couple issues of Dylan, you get a couple issues of Eddie, and we've been kind of in the Eddie zone a little bit lately, and I thought, all right, we're going to get some more Dylan, and he's dispatched so quickly that I'm like, all right, I get it. he's up against Carnage. That would be a short fight, but I still feel like I would have dragged it on a little bit longer, maybe halfway into issue two or, you know, before really taking him out. But uh, I don't know. I guess that's just because I didn't really like issue two and I wanted more from it. Uh, but that's that. And that hit the brakes on it and made me dislike this run overall um, to the point where I would say I'm less than mid on it. If I gave, you know, the first trade of the uh, Carnage story, if I gave that maybe like a five or a six, I would say I probably gave it like a six. Um, I'd probably give this like a four, like this little event here and issue seven. Like, I don't know. And, and again, there's like a page where Liz is like, the symbiote stirs within Liz. I'm like, show that, like draw it. Like what the heck, man? Like what is with just blank, boring faces, expressionless sometimes faces when characters are, are talking and you need the dialogue to convey the emotion. It's like, come on, man. Like show us something, show the, show her back, you know, facing the camera, us, and the symbiote slivering up her spine on the outside of her clothes, and her, like, you know, twitching her head while her co-worker's like, are you okay? And then she's like, yeah, I'm fine. I gotta go, you know? Um, and then she, like, grabs the weapon and leaves or whatever. Like, do something more interesting than just close-up of face. Like, and the symbiote stirs. It's like, oh, man. So, I don't know. But it was cool to see Misery again. Like, I, I like what they've done with Liz, but I'm really just surprised that a book with Liz Allen, Flash Thompson, and Cletus Cassidy bored me i was just really surprised by that because i like all three of those characters and dylan is growing on me throughout this run he's been growing on me and in the donny cage run towards the end he grew on me more so i want good things for that character and i just felt like this was just mad to me um but you know if you think differently let me know down below we'll keep talking down there thanks so much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace